all the big calls on all the very biggest of races. Welcome back to your pin stickers edition of What a Shout, the Racing Post flagship feature weekend show brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365, Dave Orton. Thrill to be back on this biggest of weekends. It's the universe's biggest race. And this is the show to be tuning into. Don't forget, this is like, subscribe, comment, and share. That's how you do it, basically. If you're watching on YouTube, say hello, get your selections in for the biggie. Who did you pull in the pin stickers? It's all about the sweepstake this weekend, isn't it? If you're looking for in-depth analysis, I'm afraid you've come to the wrong show. Let's get on with it then, shall we? Somewhere in the capital on a Friday morning. If you're not a member yet of the Racing Post website, why on earth not? That is still out there, that deal for you as well. 50%, I believe, isn't it? I have been talking over this advert for about the last three months. <laughs> and the deal remains the same. You can hear Chuck people that. Stay ahead of the field, then you're about to see some very well-known faces. Digital edition, it comes out at 9 p.m. We've had Cheltenham, haven't we? But we're just about to rev it up this year, aren't we? The weather's finally getting better, and we can look forward now to some absolute cracking action on the flat, of course. But... At Aintree, we've got the Bet365 meeting coming up at Sandown. We're going to go out with a bang. Stay out of the field. You get Kills on there, you get DJ, you get Tom Siegel, of course. They're the ones that matter, aren't they? Let's face it. But if you really want to lose some RPRs and all that, they're there for you as well. Subscribe today, then. I finally got through that one. Right, let's move straight on. Let's get on with this. Pacey, pacey, pacey. Paul Keely joins me back. How are you doing? Are we spreading you like butter this week? Uh, we are, yeah, been around a bit. But, uh, he's narky uh, today. Yeah. And he's David narky. Jennings joins us, his <laughs> annual trip he's, to the Water Shelf. He's narky. Season. He was like, before the show started, he was like, come on, I need to get out of here. Come yeah, on, come on. on. Get on with it. I've never get seen you in bad form. So oh, we're going to have to turn you around. Start the this is even maybe blowing me out on this. <laughs> That's it, no, I haven't eaten. Uh, um, you can you know, barely see you. You're hurry. fading away, so you're. Yeah, quite right. Well, this is going to be fun, isn't it? All right. And one man has been to Aintree already this week is Pat Cooney from our sponsors. Yes, absolutely. I was there yesterday. Had a great time. Great atmosphere there. And good to be yeah. in the studio. I've walked the course. It's uh, riding well. Credit to everybody. Checking the birch is still in place and all that sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No excuse look, ground. Had a little look at beaches. Uh, Pat, let's talk about the race. Uh, 40 runners and no reserves this year. That's the first thing to say. Who is the favourite as we've been all about Corrick Rambler since Cheltenham, isn't it? Of course, he's yeah. winning the ultimate. Ten pound well in. We'll get to him. Not favourite out right now, though. Well, we're currently eight the field. It's him. We've got uh, Delta Work in there. Noble Yates at nine. I think some firms, you'll wake up tomorrow, you look at the price-wise grid or wherever, you'll see 10 the field. So don't be in any rush. But we are best odds guaranteed, so take the prices. But as things stand at the moment, I'm not convinced Corey Rambler will go a favourite, you know. I think uh, we all saw him win last time out. He does come from off the pace, as we know. Plenty of horses in the market. We're tending to find those 25 to 1 chances of being popular. And the, the, the move at the moment is the Rachel Blackmore horse. Ain't that a shame? Punters like back in Rachel Blackmore. So this is a different market than your normal market 364 other days of the year. You've got to go with what the public want to back and react accordingly. Greatest race in the universe then, chaps. Weirdest race as well, isn't it? Do you know, the first ever winner of the National was Lottery. Know, was Lottery. Mm. Dave Jennings is in the house. And of course, everyone calls it every year, DJ, don't they? Your phone goes mad all us, <laughs> don't we? The butcher, yeah. the baker, the candlestick yeah. maker. What do they want to have their two quid on? And it, they call it a lottery. Is it that still? No, I don't think so. No, it's, it's changed completely. Like, you're, you're not essentially looking for the best jumper in the race anymore. Like, Noble Yates won the race last year. He's not the best. He wasn't the best jumper in the race. He gets from A to B okay. I think you get away with mistakes more, obviously, now than you used to. I don't think it is the lottery it once was, but it's still, like, you look at the, the, the betting there with Bet365, 8 to 1 the field, it'll probably be 10 to 1 tomorrow. It's not straightforward. All right, OK. We're going to give you our one, two, three, fours, by the way, uh, at the end of the show. Kills, not since one for Arthur, dear old one for Arthur, one a couple of years back for Lucinda Russell, Corrick Rambler's trainer, has a British trained runner finished in the top three. Your top four are probably all British trained, are they? I don't know. Uh, no, they're not. Yeah, well, that's oh, wise, yeah. according to the recent trend. I don't know, there's only 12 in it as well, isn't there? 12, yeah. 12 of the yeah. 40, which is mad. We're stacked up against it uh, again. But yeah, up, up, up against it again. Um, we've certainly got horses with the chances, though. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And the other thing is, we've got better ground than normal. Like, you know, I mean, you expect the Irish to dominate when it's soft ground, don't you, in races like this. But it's a, it's a different race this year. I mean, it's a, it, it, it gets, you know, it's, it, it's like Dave said, it cha it's changed um, vastly over the years. Uh, you probably want to look for young horses now, never used to. Mm. 
26 of the 39 from 1975 are won by horses days 10 or older. None of ones. And that was from 75 to 2014. Yeah. None of it ones. Was the, it was the thing, wasn't it? Double figures. You, 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 it attracts a better class of horse, and you've got young, up and coming horses yeah. coming into this. I mean, we've had a horse that won it last year. Seb, uh, Noble Yates, first, so first seven year old winner since 1940. He had a gold cup prep this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? We might that might be what we see happening. We're horses running in the well, horses running in the Grand National before they go on to challenge for a gold cup rather than the other way around. All right, okay, it's the hope that kills you, isn't it, for British runners, but can we get one across the line? Let's find out. This is the beginning of your pin stickers guide. Put a pin in, in the office sweepstake. Who have you got? Who's got number one? Any second now? Pat Cooney, where is the perennial runner up in the market at the moment? Any second now? He's around about 12, 14 to one chance. Um, he's priced because he's going to be popular with the, the once a year punters, but his top weight is 11, he's badly handicapped. I don't think anyone looking at the race in depth could look at him as, as a likely winner. Get round, be placed, run a big race, get plenty of mentions by the commentator, yes, but I can't see him define top weight. Ooh. He's going to be bang popular though, DJ, isn't Ooh. he? Because he comes in with a win next to his name and he's the, he's the national one, isn't he? he? He's a finisher, isn't he? He's going to finish. Yes. That's, that's one thing that you can almost guarantee. Uh, it's utterly bizarre, his handicap mark. I wrote about this a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> According to the handicapper, he is the second best horse to have ran in the race in the last decade. There's mm. only one horse with more ability than any second now, according to the handicapper, which is? Tiger Oak. No. Ooh. Bristol De Moy is the only horse rated above 167 to have ran in the Grand National in the last decade. Tiger so that's, that's, what, that's how good he thinks he is. I don't think he's as good as the handicapper thinks he is. Mm. I could see him finishing somewhere between fourth and seventh. That, there we go. This is what we wanted to know. Any second now? Well, the right thing is, well, I want to say you want younger horses, don't you? But he has been given a stiff task. I think. I think nowadays with uh, with small offences, there was slight reduction in distance. Um, the entry factor is totally overblown. Uh, you know, Tiger Roy may run the race twice. He run the race twice because he's a high class horse, mm. uh, and probably would have been placed at a Gold Cup if he'd run in one. Uh, and so, yeah, the, he's got his built-in entry factor, one, six, seven, um, no chance. He'll get round. He might even finish He might even finish in the money for each way punters, but as a win potential, I don't think he's got any. You're going to get loads of places with Bet365. If you've drawn number one, you've got Mr. Atrey on your side, basically. All right, let's go down. We've mentioned Tiger Roll. Can he do it, Kills? Back-to-back years for Noble Yates. I doubt it. I mean, because he has had that Gold Cup preparation this year, and he's, he's improved again. Now, improving again means you go up in a handicap. So what happened with Tiger Roll, he was, he was primed for two Grand Nationals. So he won the first one and he was £9 higher for the second one and he won that. Uh, Noble Yates is £19 higher than he was last year. That is a mighty ask, especially having been run off his feet and charged up the hill for fourth in the Gold Cup. He's a right hard race there as well, much harder than he had. Uh, at Cheltenham in the ultimate year before, so not for me. Mm, I saw a conflated pull up, didn't we, in the bowl on uh, Saturday, it was just uh, on Thursday, sorry, that was uh, one place ahead of him. Sean Bowen, great record over the fences, mm. he takes over this year. Noble Yates, come on, fourth in the Gold Cup. Yeah, I think with, with Noble Yates, he's never going to be beaten. He's a, what you would call a hardy, if we weren't, you know, doing this before the watershed, you'd say he's a hardy. You know the word I'm going to say next. We can all imagine it. Yeah. He's one of these, he's never been, I, I was out with Emmett Mullins last week and I said it to him, I said, is it just about keeping him in contention? And he said, he's often never in contention, he said. Um, I think if you go back to his performance in the many clouds, it looks good now, really good against a high senior. He beat him fair and square that day. He's the type of horse, if he's in contention, and by I mean in contention, if he's within six lengths of the horse in front, yes. crossing the Melling Road, he's going to be extremely dangerous. He's got that Paisley Park about him and he just there keeps is. going. Mm. Uh, but it's just that fear in the back of my mind that he's going to be tailed off and then mm. just plodding on for fourth or fifth. But he's the class horse in the race. He's the best horse in the race. He doesn't have top weight, but he's the best horse in the race. We've just talked about the one-two from last year. Pat Cooney, Noble Yates in the market. Uh, he's going to be popular. He's third favourite at the moment, around about nine to one. Not too many people backed him last year. It was 50 to 1 last year, so it's not, it's not automatic to presume there's the, those who backed him last year are going to go again. I just keep coming back to those kills. says £19 higher. It, it sounds a lot. Go well without winning for me. All right, OK, let's move on to number three. It's Galvin. Uh, a lot of people thought he'd win the cross country. He's now got to give weight to Delta Work. Number three, DJ, come on in this. If he can't handicap, he's not handicapped to sort of even get anywhere near Delta this time, is he? No, he has a chance. I think he's the Ooh. one. I think he'll come on a lot from the cross country. I know the camp are very much thinking Delta Work is the main hope from the Calentra House team. Uh, I think with Galvin, I think the race will suit him. It's Davy Russell's last time riding in the National. It's such, it would be such a Davy Russell thing to do to win the Grand National like Sam Willie Cohen did on his last ride. If the ground is riding reasonably quick on Saturday, 
he he's a big player. He's a classy horse, a Grade One winner. I don't think he'll win, but I just can't see him finishing out of the frame. Whew, Twenty to one, then Pat, at the moment, rough, roughly. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think people are too hung up on the cross country form, which is a different scenario altogether. He shouldn't beat Delta Work purely on the form book, but that was over that track that they just run, keep running round and round and round, don't they? And, <laughs> and uh, so there is an entry yeah. fence. And and Galvin, a lot of people thought he'd win the Cheltenham Gold Cup last year, so he's a he's a yeah. he's a classic. Dismiss at your peril, I think. Mm. Dismiss or yeah, he's a good horse. I mean, you know, we saw the um, the Hunter Chase on Thursday. The ground didn't look as soft as they were saying it was, did they? You know, and that's very much in his favour. And it wasn't necessarily in his favour at Cheltenham. So he's got a chance. He does. He, he does obviously stay very well. Having won a national Hunt Chase, I, I'm not sure whether he's genuinely worth the mark he's got. Um, mm. But he'll stay. Got a feeling DJ might be feeling more positive about this. Right, Gordon Elliott, if he wins this, he becomes a record equaling trainer, doesn't he? Of course, along with the McCain's. Uh, all right, Fury Road is next, number four. Uh, I was actually thinking this guy could go well in the Ryanair. DJ really disappointed me in that. Yeah, he wasn't beating that far, though. That's the only thing. Uh, can stay, won't stay. Mm. Can't stay, won't stay. Th that's simple. Price? Yeah, 40 to 1 at the moment. Um, yes, will he get home? Dubious for me. The gig in Stan Colours will become the most... Pro pro probably the last horse off the bridle, but I can't see him finishing the first eight. Big ride number four for John Joe O'Neill Jr. The big dog number five comes in next, Gills. Last time out faller. Uh, last time out faller, but when I've run in a race, wasn't he? At, at Leopardstown, still in front, wasn't going to win, obviously, Galloping de Deschamps won the race, but he did run, he was running really well there. Whether he'll stay again is another one I'd... I'd yeah, I wouldn't be 100% certain, but he's got a bit of class about him. Big spin for Aidan Coleman. Yeah, Keith Donoghue has deserted him. He rides Delta to work. He was originally booked for the big dog. Uh, again, I don't think he's particularly well handicapped. I prefer a few others. Mm, the big dog with a name like that, though. Just like you, Pat Cooney, well backed. <laughs> Popular for the small stake. Because they're just like you, a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you know him well, DJ. Popular with the, the smaller punters. Um, as for the professionals, I think we'll have a short list of four or five and he won't be on any of ours. All right, the first of Woolly Mullins. He was third in the uh, Welsh National, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 You know, so he does stay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's, he's, talking he's always looked like he's a sort of national. <laughs> I just wondered whether he's handicapped to win or not. I'm not sure, but he's been sneakily yeah. back. As has Capadano. Is this some of the, the green and gold weight money behind this? Well, there's only one man to talk about Capadano, and that is Mr. Paul Keeley. Oh, is this... Is it, ooh, Take it away. He's the one. He's, a, he, he's the one for me. He's the class act, I think, in any other stable. Uh, and in fact, in Willie Mullins' stable, if he didn't have Galloping Deschamps, he'd have been in the Gold Cup. He think he's a proper horse, this horse, and he's a spring horse. He's one of the last two uh, Punchestown festivals. 30 run a handicap hurdle, the first of them, showing that he can handle a big field. Last year beat Lifetime Ambition very easily in a grade one champion novice chase over three mile. Looks like a stayer, looks like a real class horse. I think he might be the actual best horse in the race because I think because he's still unexposed. Mark of 160, it's not going to be easy off a Mark of 160, but I think he's a very, very high class horse. You've there. got Danny Mullins jumping and on when got, he jumps on one for Willie. We know what happens got, this season. Yeah, we've got Danny Mullins on, you know, I'm perfectly happy with that. And I think he's going to run a massive race. Oh, what price, Pat Cooney? 16 to 1. I like a lot about him, in fact, only in the, apart from the fact he's a seven year old, but then uh, I just go back to the form book last year and a seven-year-old won it so I get it spring campaign Willie Mullins you're ticking an awful lot of boxes he's an unexposed horse hard to get a proper handle on uh, might come back and win it next year which segment does he finish in DJ you've got these markets haven't you, Do you know what I think 10, for t 10 to 20 if I was back in Capadano I'd be back in him win only because I think he's a type of horse he'll either win or he won't get round. Right. That'll be my thinking. Because I don't think he's a particularly good jumper. OK, all right. Uh, made the frame in the race last year. Delta work, of course, beat Galvin in the cross country. Uh, classy act. So this is the first of our single figures putting pressure on to go out while it favourite Pat. Yeah, he's round about 8-1, to one, joint favourite at the moment. As I say, we'll probably be 10 the field in places tomorrow. And he'll be very much in the equation. He beat Galvin, you know, admittedly in the cross country last time out. But you do look at him and you think he's a classy horse to be given 11-4. It's there on the form book, there on ability. He is a player. He's a pound lower than last year yeah. somehow. Uh, does that pound help him stay the extra distance? Because I backed him last year, DJ. I got excited, but I don't think he quite got home. Maybe, maybe not, but they're <coughs> convinced he's a better horse this year. I know he was nine last year and he's ten this year, but Keith, Keith Dunne, who rode him in the cross-country at Cheltenham, he thought he bolted up. Like, genuinely, he thought he bolted up. I think he was on Nick Luck's podcast during the week and he said, I actually bolted up here, so I did. Uh, he has got a big chance. He, he looks better. I thought he looked really well at Cheltenham. 
I, I, I can see him running a big race. I think he will definitely start favourite. If you're back in a horse to start favourite, I think Delta Work is the one that will start favourite. He's got that kind of tiger roll feel about him. Um, I think he'll finish in the first four. Loads of the public people I know, they all want to be with this horse. Kills? Uh, he's just too bloody short, isn't he? Simple as that. I mean, he's eight to one. He's been away. He got left for dead. Remember after the last last year? Yeah. You know whether he actually saw it out. I mean, he's been doing his winning over long distances in them in them silly cross country races, isn't he? So yeah. yeah. Five time Grade One winner. <clears throat> yes, I know. But you know, back in the day, he's a ten year old now as well. I'm 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 in for I'm in for um, younger horses in this race now. All right, there we are. Number seven Delta Work will be popular if you pulled him. You're on a right old runner, says DJ. <laughs> hey, guess what? We've got a British train runner. Number eight, <laughs> Sam Brown. What on earth is he doing in the top ten, Baguni? Yeah, the highest rated English runner. Say hello to Sam Brown. Um, too old, too slow. He's, oh, too old, too slow. He said, now we're getting the pace up, aren't we? He said, Winting could win. A bit harsh. <laughs> Aidan Coleman seemingly jumped off him. Uh, you know, yeah. Where are we going? Just move on. Sounds like my football manager. <laughs> well, listen, he won. He'll stay, won't he? Well, I think he'll stay. I think he probably wants a bit softer ground. Well, he, this is the thing. He did win. Yeah. He did win the three mile handicap chase. Bolt it up. The meeting last year. That was a race I'm pretty sure don't push it one. It, yes, it yes, used to be a breeding really ground for national winners, that. As uh, a and there was an Evan Williams thing that yeah. won that and kept getting placed in the Grand National. So, at a big price, don't don't be surprised. He's an in-and-out horse, isn't he? He's, he's a very in-and-out horse. He's one of my cliff horses he has ability. Past. <laughs> he, I always thought he wanted an absolute bog. Gave him absolutely no chance in the handicap chase in this card last year. He goes and bowls up. I can't make head nor tail of him. Unlike Lifetime Ambition, I'm assuming, who who showed a liking for the fences in the Grand Sefton, wasn't it? Yeah, if he gets home, he has a chance. Um, he's He wears his heart in his sleeve. He has to be ridden prominently. It'd be a great story for Jessica Harrington. Yes. An absolute lady. Hasn't been well. Yeah. And this is one of the stories that the National tends to produce. Definitely has got a chance. Like, it's not fairy tale stuff, just hoping that it's a good story. There's form there to back it up. Took to the fences. Has got grade one form as a novice. Started a favour for the Drimmore once upon a time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't dismiss him. Yeah, we, uh, uh, time for bingo, Pat. Friend of the show. Yeah. Jesse Aarons has been on this show twice. She's been an absolute queen to deal with. This would be a marvellous moment, wouldn't it? And a lot of people mm. out there, sages of the Grand National, say you've got to have a story. You've got to have an emotional exactly story right. attached to one of the horses. This could be it. Yeah, well, this one's 25 to 1. I, I like its form. I like its uh, credentials. I like its connections. It's just four and a quarter and a bit miles. I just worry about the trip for it. But I could see if you're backing it, you're going to be up there punching for a long way. All right, then let's go to number 10 that ends our first segment for you of four coming up. It's carefully selected. Jockey of the moment, well, he was at Cheltenham anyway, Michael O'Sullivan, loads of love from Willie Mullins, massive ride for him, the Thiesties winner. Yeah, he's very in and out. Won the Thiesties, then was terrible in the Bobby Joe, was terrible before the Thiesties. So on the in, out, in, out way he's going, this will be an in day. I just have a feeling it'll be an out day. I couldn't trust him. Mm, kills. Yeah, not 100% sure about him, I mean, but he is, you know, he's obviously very talented. He has loads of time off the track, had his issues. Um, it, wouldn't be an, it wouldn't be near the top of my list, I have to say. Whopping price for a talented horse. Yeah, 33 to 1. I just prefer others. You're a bit skinnier than other bookmakers, are they? I can well, tell you. Well, it's Willie Mullins, second, third and fourth strings. You, people, people find them popular. All right, they're the classy animals then. You're 1 to 10. Let's draw breath and turn the page. OK, let's move on. Second segment for you. Who drew number 11, Coco Beach? Will life be a beach for Harry Cobb? Big spare for him. Yeah, uh, strong traveller. Eight last year, travelled as well as anything. Doesn't stay, brilliant jockey. Again, can see him finishing roughly around where he finished last year. Yeah, I mean, he was tailed off last year, wasn't he? But, you know, he did win a three and a half mile Grand National trial, didn't he? Do yeah. you know what I mean, he does stay a certain amount. I remember backing him for the, for the red winter. Mm. Uh, finished second back then, over two miles. But then there... Uh, yeah, I, he's a Tiesta's winner. Yeah, I wouldn't rule him out running a better race than last year. Can't really yeah, see him. Well, though, he finished eighth. He ran well. Four greys have won the Grand National. He's been to become the fifth, and he'll just be popular, Pat, because he's a grey, won't he? Absolutely, and of course, Harry Cobden is a, a popular jockey. Good spare ride for him. Mm. You, right. you wouldn't be knocked over if, if he ran well for a long way, but again, you'd, you'd have to prefer others, wouldn't you? Giggingstown, Gordon Elliott, yeah. Ryan, Harry Cobden. I can see money coming Who in. Who were the four greys? Oh, Nickel Coyne was one, wasn't he? Oh, don't go there, we haven't got time for that, have Neptune we? Colognes. Neptune Colognes, there's only four. Ah! No, it wasn't anyway. the first one since Nickel Coyne, so we forget that. Get them, in <laughs> get them in below. He'll be asking me the last mayor to win it, funnily enough, I know that. Uh, Longhouse Poet coming up next, sixth last year, DJ. These colours just have a habit of turning up at big festivals and performing Sean Ryan. My second choice on the race. Ooh. Yeah, I, I think he's, 
he kind of maybe be last year he left his race in the Thiestas that he won. This year he's been trained specifically for one day. Martin Brazel, a terrific target trainer, hit the crossbar on a couple of occasions at Cheltenham, but he just is able to get them cherry ripe for the big day. Loved it for a long way last year, probably, probably travelled too strongly. Yeah. Just that experience might stand to him, my second choice in the race. Number six, our birdies trainer, uh, yeah. Price. 14 to 1, and I echo everything DJ's just said, you couldn't rule him out. Kills? Yeah, I wouldn't rule him out at all. He's, he's, he's one of those with a proper chance, I think, yeah. Plenty of rhyme and reason about Longhouse Poet then. Uh, Guyard de Menil, second season, novice chase winner, would you believe it? The Cheltenham Festival, National Hunt Chase. DJ, come to you. I was on him like everyone else was. I think he needed every single yard of that, or did he get too far back? The problem could be the handicap mark. Yeah, big fan of Patrick Mullins, but probably the worst winning ride he's ever given a horse, I'd say. But Paul Townend jumps on. This is the pick of Paul. Yeah, Paul Townend has picked him. I can see why. Like, ran a cracker in the Irish National last year as a novice, finished third. He's a year stronger. He seems a more thorough stayer this year. Like, he really did see out that, that uh, National Hunt chase to be Chemical Energy. He's another one I can definitely see him finish in the first yeah. six, but you can't have 14 horses finish in the first six. Like, yeah, and so I'm going to have to pick some. He's probably skinny enough kills with his handicap mark. I mean, he's got a yeah, he's got great one novice form. But yeah, he's, he's got, got great got one novice form. He's got decent form, isn't he? There's no doubt about it. Does he get too he's far got back? a chance. He doesn't... Ah. No, he's not going to get outpaced. No, you don't think so? I think it was Patrick's choice where he was. I mean, crikey, he was second and two and a half mile grade one earlier on this year. Where's Paul going to have him sitting then? I'd say in the in the tenth between tenth and twentieth yeah, on the first yeah, circuit. He won't, you know, he, he won't lack for pace in the early stages. Where they want to where they want to put him, he'd be, you know, he'd be fine. Um, whether he had a hard harder race than he should have had at Cheltenham is yeah. one is one matter, and the price just doesn't excite me. Uh, which is Pat Cooney, twelve to one. Um, again, you wouldn't want to put anyone off him, would you? If no. someone said to you, I fancy that, and you go, oh, I wouldn't back that, you'd be, yeah, I can see it, mm. and I can see it. The superstitious out there, he's number 13. We've got Willie Mullins and Paul Townend on side, hot off an Irish national success the other week. Uh, number 14, Durasso. Every time I look at an Irish race card and there's a graded race, he seems to turn up for Joseph O'Brien. Yeah, no chance. N zero chance. Luke Dempsey on? Uh, yeah, it doesn't stay. I mean, he was second in a, uh, in a Galway plate, was third in a uh, Kerry National, is it Kerry? Yeah. <laughs> Munster, <laughs> Kerry. Got it right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, so... Still, you we're going to bring he's, you to Listowel someday. He's got a bit of he's, he's got a bit of talent about him, definitely. But yeah. stamina wise, can't it's see it. it. No. Yeah, okay. Eighty to one shot. Yeah, um, trip the worry, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a big ask. Number fourteen. Might be on a loser there. Uh, number 15, ring the bell. We've got another British trained horse, and this is a right old buzzer. It is the Coral Gold Cup winner, Lamy lost for Harry Skelton, Dan Skelton. Yeah, 14 to 1. Of course, we, we, we know him winning the big handicap at Newbury in November. Fourth that day was Corrick Rambler, yet he's twice, two and a half times the price, maybe. So, popular Lamilos. He, I was up at Kelso the day he got beat. On the face of it, it was a bit, oh, he was clear and he got caught, but Connection said, oh, he'll need the run. We're all about Aintree. He is a player. He what a pro Pat Cooney is. Won the big handicap at Newbury. <laughs> sponsored by... There's a reason why he's been in this game as long as he has, DJ. Absolutely right. Teflon over there. Um, massive company man. Company man. Yeah, well on, Pat. <laughs> massive chance. Massive, massive player, this horse. I yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. He, jumped well, he jumped well at Newbury. The ground was said to be too quick for him initially, but he, he handled it fine. It won't matter if it's soft. It won't, it won't matter to him if it's good. He'll stay. The form worked out really well. The second in the race remastered. You know, he's gone up six pounds for that, but the second in the race is higher than that, has gone up more than that. The fourth in the race is Corrett Rembler, who's gone up more than that, albeit is carrying less for this race because he's well in. The sixth in the race has gone up more than that because yeah. he's won twice since. So he's extremely well handicapped. Dan Skelton said before the premier chase at Kelso, not sure I've got him 100% fit. He went through that race like he was completely different class mm. and then just got knackered. It was a send on we go, wasn't it, in that? <laughs> he's <laughs> gonna, he's gonna come on for that. He's a you don't like him, DJ? No, he's I do, massive, yeah, yeah. I, I just, a, he's a massive Kelso, player. it's just one of those tracks, Kelso, where you just scratch your head wondering, how did that horse get beaten? Mm. Like, is that camera mm. angle? I think you think they're further ahead. It's a yeah. They are, and then they come into the last, yeah. and you're like, oh my god, I thought he was 10 lengths ahead, he's only two yeah. lengths ahead. Yeah. Um, this is one of these where he has to have a massive chance, but I don't fancy him, but I don't know why I don't fancy him. It's the many clouds room, isn't it, this, we should say uh, as well. To, he has to have a massive chance, yeah. <coughs> All right, uh, massive price on his back form, that's for sure. It's a Scaria a 10 for the McNeil family. Another friend of the show, Pat Cooney. Yeah, owned by uh, Max McNeil and, uh, and colleagues. Um, he's good, he's bad, he's good, he's bad, and he's bad. No, he's bad, 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 bad. I thought you were going to say ugly in there. He's not <laughs> ugly, Max, that's for sure. Um, 
it'd be great for Max, but uh, no, can't see it. They experimented with the trip, didn't they? Of course, at Cheltenham, it, it, it backfired. Yeah, you know, if the way you like any second now on his best form, he's right behind him, right? You know the way after the show, you are going for breakfast to the calf, right? You are going for breakfast, and Keels just get like chips and like I hate beans <laughs> and load of beans put on top of the rashers and sausages and pudding and all that, loads of beans and that. I will eat that breakfast. Ah. If, if, as <laughs> Gary Atten wins this race, I will eat that breakfast, every bite of it, including the beans, which I hate. He's sticking well, okay. with us as well. I'm going to hold you to that. But, he I has mean, no chance. He doesn't but stay. I think you're safe. <laughs> he doesn't stay. It's yeah. Gary Atten. Uh, yeah, lots to prove yeah. then. All right, unlike number 17 on his best form, OK, he pulled up at Cheltenham last time. They're sticking blinkers on the big breakaway. Uh, he, he's, he's one of those horses who think he can run a big race if... He takes his defences. Now, he's either going to balloon them and get himself tailed off or realise that he can brush through them and, 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 and go really well. That's the way That's the way I look at him. I actually think he's going to run well. So do I. Right? He's going to... So you know, he's definitely Ooh. going to... He's definitely going to stay. Uh, I don't think there's any, any doubt about that. Uh, I think he's a player if he takes the defences. This time last year, you sat in the studio with us, you put Fiddler on the roof on top. We all remember that. Uh, this one going to play a better tune? <laughs> hey, that was very good, Dave. What I'm a pro. i 6 a.m. to say this, DJ. Uh, I, I, he's just one of them. If he, if he just gets into a rhythm early on, he has a habit of, of, of just racing lazily, doesn't he? But if he, if, the, if he does take to the blinkers and they waken him up and sharpen him up, mm. if he's going out onto the final circuit, travelling well and looking in good form with himself, like, he's a big price for a horse with his ability. Yeah, Brendan Powell will be getting excited about this. The Tizars, you know, ultra gold, back-to-back -back top and winner. They love these fences. Mm. It'll be a great story for them as well. I can see him going well. The Welsh Ash performed there towards C, but what price is he? He's 33 to 1. Um, you'll know your fate after six fences or so rid him, won't you? I, I, I just couldn't back a horse wearing blinkers first time in a Grand National, because it might just light them up and... It's dangerous enough, isn't it? The big breakaway's been called some names. Uh, Kate Gentleman uh, has gone anywhere but his name recently. American-owned. We've had an American-owned national winner before. Number 18. What's going on with this guy? He's now with Shark Island, isn't he? Yeah, Shark really fancies him, but like Shark would really fancy me to win 100 <laughs> metres if, if, if he trained me. Uh, he, he, I just can't see it. Like, are you really going to improve a horse that much from Emmett Mullins? Can't see it. And, he started, and, horse and he started as a very promising two-miler as well, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, I can't. I'll throw him into the breakfast as well. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. There, there could be a theme here. I reckon you should throw one with a chance in. I'll throw yeah. one with it. I hate being so much, but I will throw. <laughs> I'll throw one with a chance into my breakfast. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. We'll wait for that. Uh, number eighteen, just quickly, hundred to one ish. Hundred to one. Yep. There you go. Self-explanatory. Uh, Irish train, though. You never know. Uh, number 19, Roy Marge. I wanted to back this chap in the race last year. He didn't get in, I don't think. Shows you what sort of race we've got here. Felix and Charles coming over the right for Pat Griffin. Tell us about him. DJ. Yeah, he has a chance. He's very consistent. He was second the Longhouse Poet at Down Royal on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, trained for the race. Apparently a school. I spoke to, uh, Pat, uh, to James Griffin about him. Schooled really well over the national fences. Um, yeah, he's, he's one of them. He, he's not a real kind of sexy profile. But I could see him running well. I, I think he'll finish in the first ten. Yeah, he, he hits historically quite a few mm. trends. So what price? He's forty to one. You could see him being e relatively easy to back, given the dare I say unfashionable trainer jockey combination. Uh, but he's a little bit under the radar. You know, he's, he's maybe worth a speculative small stake each way. He's a good travelling veteran, that's for sure. Do you like him kills or do we move on? Uh, I can't say I fancy him at all. But um, he's the spotlight nap for Richard Austin. He's got a far, far, Ooh. far better. <laughs> Record in the Grand National than I have. And lovely, we're teasing some premium <laughs> Did he tip, content um, for you. Sire de Berlay in the stairs hurdle, no? That was uh, no, Ben Hutton, wasn't Ben Hutton? Well yeah. done, Ben. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we move on. Number 20 then, the last of this season. You like this guy. I do. Diol uh, Come on, uh, have I got it right? Diol Kerr? Yeah, Diol Kerr, yeah. Diol Kerr, it's that simple. Yeah, it's not like Japanese or anything. Dundera. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my Diol Kerr, like? there's, only yeah, there's only seven there's letters in the word. It's called Oshin Murphy Oisin, and you. <laughs> he caught me up. I was just like, "Come on, you're not having it on, on some spare ribs." Uh, I do like this chap. I think that Paddy Power form. He can be in and out. He's got the blinkers on. On his hurdling form, he's well handicapped. He's gigging down. Kieran Butley takes the ride. If he's there with a sniff around about four out, I think he'll run on. He was unlucky not to win the Paddy Power for me, and he was ahead of a horse that you like coming up. Yeah, don't give I, it away. Yeah, I think that form is bang there. And uh, at what price, Pat? This is one of my lo Pat Cooney Looney ones. 80 to 1. Oh, oh yeah, boy, yeah. Aye, aye. a whopping 80 to 1. Happy days. If you draw number 20, the bombshell is, <laughs> I think he's got a right old chance. Moving on quickly, a wave of the sea. Uh, and again, Joseph O'Brien, another guy that just seems to turn up all the time. Shane Fitzgerald taking the ride, DJ. I will eat 
four tins of baked beans if he wins. Yeah, and we will be waving by to him after the first circuit. I mean, you know, his best form's at two mile, isn't it? Like, you know, he's won a, you know, a couple of yeah. two mile races at Leopardstown Festival. No chance, shouldn't be in the race. Pat, we should be putting another zero on. 100 to 1. 1,000, say the guys. Okay, number 22. This guy's quite interesting. Manila Trump, he's been saved for the race. He ran over hurdles for Donald McCain. We know he's won the race before. Uh, son of Ginger, of course. Red Rum, a fame. Theo Gillard takes the run. He's a sneaky one for me. I'm not sure. I can't see him winning it, but I think he might run well, DJ. No, won't stay. There you go. Yeah, I mean, not an obvious stayer to me. And stack of small field wins to his name. I mean, obviously does jump well, but, you know, where's he going to get this stamina from? Pat, no, not for me. 66. The McCain factor might result in him starting half the price, mm. but not too many of us want to be on at 66, never mind 33. You like the ground. If you're getting loads and loads of places at 365, which, which we're going to find out later, but uh, I, I think he could run, outrun those odds. Vanillier, let's go mm. for this. Your old pal Johnny Deneen put him up on ITV. Well, that's all over the place, old Johnny now, hasn't he? Fantastic. Was he on ITV? He was. He was, was he on ITV? He was. He said, I think he's got a big run in him. Where was he on ITV? He was with, uh, yeah, he was. He was Yesterday. in the ring. He was on without me. Yeah. He's been on lots without you, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> well, Johnny's learning the game. Strictly come dancing next year, he is. Unbelievable. But he's, been, he's become the next grade to win the race. Number 23. Who, Johnny? Uh, he, he, he's yeah. plenty grown up, isn't he? Gav Cromwell. And this chap really did. I mean, he ran away with his race at Cheltenham over hurdles, didn't he? And it, ever since, I've found him just very difficult to get a handle on. Can't believe Johnny Deneen was on ATV without me. Anyway, uh, Vanillier, uh, do you know what? I have a theory about Vanillier. And this is probably why I wasn't on ATV, because I've got stupid theories. I think his jumping actually might... He's not a particularly good jumper because he doesn't get high enough. But I actually think he flick actually... Flick through him. Yeah, I think he could flick through them. I just watched him last day at Fairy House in the Bobby Joe, which has been a terrific trial for yeah. this race. And he was flicking through the top of fences. I think it's going to suit him. He's he's a proper stayer. I think he's got a chance. Mm, all right. He's another He's another one, you know, almost in the big breakaway mode. You've got to trust him. You've got to rely on him taking to the fences because every now and again he'd back off uh, fences, wouldn't he? Like, you know, I mean, you don't want to be doing that there. But, but if he gets in his head, oh, I can do this, he's interesting. Well, that is what happens at Aintree. Mm. Eight of the last ten, don't forget one of them was Tiger Roll, having the first run ever over the national fences before they took out this race. Could it be Vanillia, Pat Cooney? It could be 20 to 1. He's a classy hore, isn't he? He's got a grade 1 hurdle form. Uh, but Barclay winner, yeah. Yeah, and um, it was a good run behind uh, the retired Kenboy, wasn't it, last Correct. time out? I think he gave him weight as well, which mm. uh, so you look at him and you think, what 10 stone 6? Is he not a well handicapped horse? Definite contender. Vanillier, 20 to 1. Got a chance in, say the lads. Uh, number 24, Velvet Elvis. And uh, talk about recent trends. Darrow O'Keefe will be happy now that seven yards can win the race all of a sudden. Dave Jennings. Yeah, uh, my two uh, former editor of the Racing Post, Bruce Millington, who's now Group Sports Editor, is that his title? My current uh, editor, which is Ireland editor Richard Forrestal, are both really keen on Velvet Elvis. the editor's choice. Yes, he's the editor's choice. He's trained by a really shrewd handler in Tom Gibney. Uh, won the Irish Grand National a couple of years ago with Leon and Barney. Um, this horse looks to have been trained for this race. I can certainly see the case from. Um, he just hasn't quite made it into my shortlist, but he's he's close to it. He is singing from the same image as me. I think he's like fifth or sixth for me, mm. Kills. Yeah, I can see. I can definitely see him running well. He's obviously a miles better for the waste of any second now for the for the second to him last time. Player at a, player at a price, yeah. It's one of those with a bigger price that you can see going. Uh, up. And what is that pack? Uh, Four oh forty, yeah. And Elvis in the building, yeah. He's going to be. I think he'll be popular. You know, Velvet Elvis is a popular name, isn't it? Mm. But he's got the form in the book as well, so. 40 to 1, I could see him being a popular choice. Beginning to shake them up. Okay, it's number 24. <laughs> Let's get number 25. Rachel Blackmore, okay. Uh, already won the race. Uh, already had a winner on the week uh, in the Shortmore Run Collars. This time, ain't that a shame, David Jennings? Yeah, I think ain't that a shame will win. I think he's the best handicapped horse in the race. That English handicapper has left him on a mark of 146, which is very, very lenient. Um, should have won the Munster National, got in tight to the last, and was just collared close home by the big dog. Then went to the Paddy Power, uh, sorry, the, the big handicap chase at Leperstown over Christmas. <laughs> sorry, Pat. The big handicap chase <laughs> at Leperstown <laughs> over at Christmas. That one with a lot of runners in. And it was, it was one of these where I'd say if any ride in the last 12 months, Rachel Blackmore could have back, it was that one. Just got to the front too soon, hung all over the, 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 the the run in um, to me he was by far the best horse in the race I, he was the one that should have won that race by two or three lengths he didn't he's gone to Goran Park to win a beginner's chase unbelievably he was still a maiden over fence up on a couple of weeks ago went to Goran Park jumped well travelled well popped out in front 
Best handicapped horse in the race. Ridden by Rachel, who's won the race before. Trained by Henry de Bramhead, who's won the race before. Nice low weight, strong traveller. Will enjoy it. I think he'll win. Mm, there you go. All right. Experience, not a problem. All furthest, to DJ. furthest he's ever gone is three mile two in the Ultima last year. Six to one tailed off. And... There's a different Wednesday. opinion. <laughs> Will Kills. you cheer up a bit, will you? <laughs> it's Friday, it's Grand National yeah, Week, for God's sake. Man, come on. Uh, what I will say, Wednesday. this horse is the mover. He's been the hot horse over the last 48 hours. Um, we saw with Rachel Blackmore, it, 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 her horse went on favourite for the Irish National on Monday, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. am I right? Yeah, that's right. The I was public, wrong. <laughs> the public latch on to Rachel. If you're thinking and I'm an R in and you're waiting for, I'll wait, I'll wait till five o'clock yeah. before. But As we are recording this, you've just gone 10 from 12. It's right. actually uh, literally changed on my Threefold. Phone. Don't be surprised if... It's gone got a favourite, can it? Yes, I think and it yeah. will. And, and I'll tell you something, just because you were crabbing my tip there, you were like, oh, didn't stay in the no. ultimate. It was the Kim Muir. I'll tell you what, I was a Kim Muir, whatever. Yeah, 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 back yeah, at didn't you, stay. ding, ding, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. All anyway, right. If it wins, I'll eat a load of beans and chips. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you like beans and chips. <laughs> but, but, but definitely take the price right now. I can see this one being favourite. Anything Rachel writes, and, you know, she, it's a double-figure price at the moment. Yeah. Anything I tip you mean, Pat? Yeah. Well, we saw with Honeysuckle, we were arming an iron how that would go in the market. Yeah. That was a well right, This horse. is being filmed Friday after this is going out. Take the price about Rachel Blackmore's runner. That is number 25. Ain't that a shame? He'll be eating beans. I'll pay for the beans if Corrick Rambler goes and wins number 26. Talking of our ex-editor, I said to Bruce when he said, what wins, Dave? And I said, well, I back Corrick Rambler in, in November. He goes, can't get a toll this, can I? Uh, <laughs> right, so so it's all about price now, isn't it? With Corrick Rambler, Pat Cooney. Yeah, currently favourite. It may be eight, nine. I think they'll even be ten for looking on the day. Uh, yes, what's not to like the best handicapped horse in the race because he's unpenalised for the Cheltenham win. So the handicapper would say to you, ah, it's got £10 in hand. The worries, it does come from off the pace. In that big race at Newbury in November, there was only the ambulance behind him for a lap and a half. Yeah. So your worry is, you know, where's he going to be? You've talked about horse being 10th to 20th. You know, you could see him being 30th to 40th. Yeah. So he needs luck, don't they all? But he also looks like he needs to be produced. Mm. Yeah, it's you know a complex I mean? ride, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I mean, he'd have to do what Will Biddick did in the Hunter Chase. He'll have to be holding him like that halfway up the run. Uh, 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 yeah. He and did pull himself up a little bit when he yeah, hit the Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah. He won yeah, with it, yeah. loads in hand, this horse. Now, we know all about this Oh, God, yeah, he won with loads horse. in hand. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's the best. He's, not, he's undoubtedly the best handicap horse in the race, whether he's the right horse for this. This is compiled yeah, by Mark yeah. 2. All right, <coughs> uh, Mark 2. He's got bundles in hand. He should be running in top-graded races, this. If he had won the Reynolds Town at Ascot, he probably would be last year. This is all the stars are aligning for this horse. Oh. Derek Fox is making the ride. He closed your eyes for that. Right. Oh, it, right. Wow. How can you not have this guy in your top four? People say he's going to get too far behind. He will be doing what she did tell us that he would do in that Coral Gold Cup, Macbeth. And have a look at the ambulances everywhere. DJ, this point, we've got to say. And having a look around, maybe not looking like he, he'll like the fences, but you shouldn't come from that far back in an ultimate and win it like he did. He does. This is a freak of horse, and he has to be in your top four, Paul Keating. Well, he's not in mine. No, he's not uh, in mine Unbelievable he's not in mine. scenes! He's not in mine, isn't he? Not mine. He can no. definitely, what the, no. the, I'll tell you what, the he more he dresses, the more he dresses, the more we'll get interested in him. I, I felt sure he was going to go favourite like everyone else. If you've got number 26, despite them, do not despair. Corrick Rambler will do what dear old one for Arthur did and go very, very close to winning. Number 27, uh, Enjoy Dalen. And again, a couple of shrews who put this up last year, the wheels have come off DJ. Yeah. I'm coming to you all the time because there's so many Irish train runners. Yeah, thank you just went to him first for Corrick Rambler. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kills. You really are narky this morning, aren't you? Someone give him some chips. <laughs> Uh, fell at the first, well, unseated at the first last year. Uh, would, this would be a good story. Kieran Murphy, trainer uh, in Westmead and County Mead. Yeah. Uh, or in County, or in Westmead and County Mead, Westmead in Ireland. Uh, I just don't like his, his a few of his runs this year. I don't think he's as good a horse as he was this time last year, even though he's better handicapped. Uh, not for me. Ninth last year, wasn't he, Pat, I think? Yeah. No, he fell at no, the first. He, 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 he ran after that then, didn't yeah, he? Well, yeah, well, he's 66 this time around. Oh, yes. Not much really to enjoy about his chance, I didn't think. It has been placed in an Irish, Irish National. national. <laughs> of course, because the Irish National was after the British. It was all very confusing. Yeah, so no, he has been placed in an Irish National, so, you know, he, he stays. He's got a jump. I mean, his jumping has been terrible this year. Right. But, you know, it's one of those, if he gets in the rhythm, you can see him running a race without winning. All right. The most frustrating horse in the race, and just to please you, Kills, I'm coming to you. missing out. Mr. Incredible and going Mr. Mr. Coffee. <laughs> no, I'm saving that one for DJ. Mr. Incredible, come on, then, then this bloke, Brian Hayes, fabulously talented rider, Willie Mullins, it's Paul Byrne. We know he's got a big one in him off his mark, but what is he going to make of these fences? 
But who knows? But he's been on his best behaviour the last two times, hasn't he? I mean, what's he done wrong? He's been on behaviour. Uh, no, he's been on. You know, he's, he's done okay. He's won two fine races at Warwick and uh, uh, and at Cheltenham, and he's got a shot if he remains on his best behaviour. You, you know, you, there's still a doubt about him, obviously. Mm. Uh, and he's one where you can say he will spit the dummy out if he doesn't take the defences, and he'll spit the dummy out quite quickly. But there's nothing wrong with his last two runs. Yeah, I always say this, but if, if, if you're in bad humour or you just need a bit of cheering up, just watch Mr. Incredible run the Tremor uh, earlier on. In, was it early on this season, I think? It was the funniest thing I've ever seen in the race course. Halfway through the race, he was just going grand, going, and then he said, no, no, I'm not moving. I'm just going to stop mid-race. So that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with yeah. a mental issue with Mr. Incredible. If he does enjoy it, and Patrick Mullins has done a terrific job with this horse. Paul Byrne, Paul, what can we say about Paul Byrne? Yeah. That's what we said already. Just the man's it right, genius. isn't he? Mm. If... He's won for in-running punters probably because if he can see him still there in amongst horses, he likes being in the mix. If he's still there with a the circuit <coughs> to run, he has a chance. Your in-running traders will be getting ready to press the yeah. agenda seat then if this one goes close. He's 14 to 1. He just doesn't seem to go away in the market. He's been very popular. I think you, if you fancy him, leave it as late as possible. Even when they're out all at the start lining up, yeah. he, he may not be there lining up, but you know he's... You wouldn't be surprised if he won, but he needs a best behaviour performance. That's number 28, Mr. Incredible. He's going to be back just because of the name, isn't he? Let's face it, but it is Willie Mullins, and he is a talented individual on his day. Best behaviour, says Gills. 14s? Yep. All right, OK. Number 29, Nicky Henderson. Oh, this is, he said he might retire if this wins, DJ. Uh, I'll, retire, I, I, I'll retire if he wins as well. <laughs> now, you know the sods law factor, I always say on this show, is the biggest thing in betting. This is your sods law horse, right? You jumped off the cliff, you know what's going to happen. Man. No, it won't happen. It just won't. He doesn't want to win. This horse does not want to win. Race. I'd wager he wants to win more than Mr. Cre Incredible wants to win. Ah, no, uh, Mr. Incredible has... It's Mr. Incredible, it's a mid-race thing and a start thing. Mr. Coffee, it's a finishing you thing. You think this is a final furlong thing? Trainer doesn't do marathons. Uh, never won a national of any sort. He's got a horrible record. Horse in the doesn't. City, isn't he? Horse doesn't do winning, and horse doesn't do the national fences, as evidenced by his run in the top of last year when he jumped like a pig. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely no chance. Add another Jumps zero. Like a pig. There are some names coming around about Mr. Coffee, but what price can we name him? He's forty to one. Some sort of a chance, but you have to be very lenient. He, he's been in my tracker on and off throughout his career. He's yet to win over fences. I backed him in the top of last year. When I think I was on him at 14 last year. Went off at five. Ran no risk. I think there were excuses that day, but you spend your life making excuses for him. Mm -hmm. don't he spent you? the first. He spent the first uh, four years of his career in my living room. Never mind in your <laughs> tracker. You tipped him for a bet for Hurdle. Uh, I thought he, thought he was going to win the Arkle. <laughs> thought he was going to win the Arkle. Thought he was going to win the Queen Mother someday. I thought this was a proper chaser. He's not. <laughs> okay, all right, so you know what's going to happen now. And there are loads of people that drew this in the sweepstake going, Nicky Anderson, Nico de Boyneville, good colours, and now you're tearing up. Pick again. <laughs> if you get them in the sweepstake, pick again. Just throw right. back in and pick again. We talk about the Coral Gold Trophy <laughs> again because Cloudy Glenn won it a couple of years ago. Number 30 finishes his segment for us, and he's for the late Trevor Hemmings. We see these colours time and time again. Charlie Doyle, super rider in the plate. Yeah, uh, it's a nice story, isn't it? Uh, Trevor Hemmings, Venetia, she's won it before. Um... It's just the no one balance, really, though, isn't it? Short and sweet. Yeah, Shape, lovely first time out. Um, uh, off a break, shaped awful at Cheltenham last but time. He, he probably isn't a Cheltenham horse, though, is he? I don't think. I, I, I think he could run well. Ah, here we I go. think he could run well. I know, I know they can't all run well, but uh, I think he could run well. well. I, just go back, go, I just go back to that big handicap chase at Newbury <laughs> a couple of years ago, <laughs> and like he beat Fiddler on the roof that day, and the two of them pulled miles clear. Um, he's just one of them in the back of my mind and going if he won I'd be sick if I didn't have a fiver on him I just think he'd run well and Venetia of course we know Mon Moan's train has won the race before that is number 30 let's get on to the final segment of runners number 31 <laughs> Hill 16 wind back a couple of seasons nearly won a beach of chase that's basically the test for this in the national in fact he was nothing in that by Snow Leopard S uh, Paul Keeley does he have any chance at a whopping price uh, no Moving on, Pat Cooney, what price is that? He's 80 to 1, um, not for me. Ryan Mania, number 31, if you've drawn it, he has won the race, or it was on call. DJ? Do you know what he's named after, Hill 16? I thought you meant Ryan Mania. <laughs> yeah, go on, Hill 16, go on, tell me. Uh, Crow Park. The Gaelic football mecca. Is it the mecca? Well, it's the hill, it's the Hill 16, it's where the Dublin team always stand, the fans. Yeah. A lot of people out there will know what that means. Tumbleweeds in here. <laughs> 
Well, did I go back in a tired state? Let me just have this conversation. <laughs> Off air, we did kills. Um, right, <laughs> number 32, Gabby's Cross uh, for the Brookhouses. Peter Carberry takes the ride. Henry de Bromhead, one of the second strings. But he's got form, DJ, hasn't he? Yeah, I'd advise you to have a look at his run at Leprosyn at Christmas because it was an incredible run. Because uh, Peter Carberry, who rode him, circled the whole field, went about from second last to almost in front jump in the last, crashed through the last, only beating a couple of lengths. I backed him that day. He could run well. That was in the Paddy Power. This yeah. is the form we think might be mm. Irish form coming into this race. Pat Cooney, what price? 50 to 1, trained by Henry de Bromhead. Um, you have to respect him. Um, not for me, but I see wisdom in people putting him up as an each way. All right. Prospect. Number 33, perhaps well named the site of prayer if you pulled him. Uh, DJ Jack Foley takes the ride for Willie. No, no chance. Forget about it. Uh, what price packs quickly? 100 to 1. Big price for a Willie Mullins horse, but uh, it's 100 for a reason. All right, okay, kills. 101 for a reason, says it all, doesn't it? Well, okay, we move <coughs> on. Good, bad, bad, I'm afraid. Number 34, another grey in the race. Eva's Oscar, first time visor. This is a dour stay up back, Cooney. Yeah, 50 to 1. Uh, could get round, could plod on. One for your each way terms, perhaps. Mm. But no, I can't see winning. Anyone like Eva's? Nope. We'll be up uh, there early. Not we'll... massively. I, I could see him finishing just outside the top 10. Mm. Like, you know, I'm sure getting round and all that, but he's not going to, yeah. you know, it'll be 50 lengths behind the winner. That's not bad for 50 to 1 shot if you're on number 34. Number 35, come, just the second Welsh trained horse to ever win the race is Our Power, who has turned into something of a staying winning machine. Pat, this one must be showing some love. Sam, Twister Davis for Sam yeah, Thomas. I do like this fella. He's round about 20 to 1 at the moment. When he won at Kempton last time, which has been a good stepping stone towards the national, he, he was going to get an un, un, no penalty for it, so he's uh, what four pound better in. I think everyone just presumed he wasn't going to get in the Grand National and didn't take the run that seriously, basing it on well he won't get in anyway. He was number forty nine or whatever. Well he is in, and he has got a terrific chance. And he's there sitting there off ten stone two, just the two runs to his name, jumps, travels, flat track. Will he stay though? Well, that's the issue, but he got three miles. He's at turned Kempton. himself inside out as a stayer this horse. Yeah. You know? If you yeah, watch that you race, they, were, over three miles. they went really hard at Kempton, and it was. It, it, you thought to yourself, they're going to stay there. I was on him that day in the race that used to be called the Racing Post Chase. So even, even I'm yeah, learning. Yeah, now. I don't mind that. Even I'm learning now. <laughs> if um, the jockey had held on to Phlegmatic, it would have won by 10 lengths. Maybe kills, but he won. Talk that, the talk there, he, well, well, absolutely. Sorry, if the jockey had. Uh, <laughs> 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 but he just ground it out. I think he might stay. He he's like in my he's my Velvet Elvis. He's in my fifth or sixth. He's not quite in my top four. I think he'll go really well. Sam Thomas has become a great marathon target trainer. Welsh tra national. I, 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 I don't. I, I genuinely don't think. I genuinely don't think he'll stay. I do like the horse, but not as much as I did like him. You'll like the modified he well. But his best form is all right-handed. I don't suppose that matters that much until you get to the canal turn. Mm, all right. Okay. Dunn mm. Boyne then coming up. We talk about carefully selected. He very nearly beat him in the Thiestes. He's had a run since. They're sticking blinkers on. Interesting ride, ride this for Jack Tudor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Just touched up. It's funny, I did Gordon Elliott's stable tour in October and we go through the horse. He had like 200 something horses and we're going through him. When came to Dunboy and he goes, he'll win the Thiestes. And I was like, really? I said, Gordon, this form is shocking. He mightn't even get into the race. He was only rated low 100s and uh, forgot all about it. He was beaten in nose. Looked like he was up. He was in front of stride before and a stride after the line of the Thiestes. Was just beaten. At a big price, I could see him running well. Can't see him winning, though. All right, OK, what price is that? Yeah, 50. I'm with DJ a bit. Run well without winning. Mm. Kills? Don Boyne? Yeah, can run well. Um, not sure. Yeah, I, I have a feeling this is an afterthought rather than a plan. I thought we had a mother and a father race in the thighs as well. I mean, everything did, didn't it? But that was a toughie. Uh, all right, number 37. And if you're going to go for a horse in triple figures, Roddy Owen's colours always seem to do well over these fences. And Frankie de Burley was going very well yeah. to a point in the cross country. I, I, if you're going for one at 100 to 1 plus, yeah. this is the one I'd almost go for. Uh, I, 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 like he would have been third in the cross country had he jumped the last. He w tried to go with Delta Work and Galvin. Them form figures are a bit misleading. I could see him running. A, I could see him finishing the first ten. He's got ten. 10-2 on his back kills. Ben Jones takes the ride. He's not one of the wackiest, is he? No, he's not one of the wackiest. He's been fourth um, in in the top of him, hasn't he? Like you know what I mean. So he, he he's gone round there. He's been round the fences three times. He's, he obviously handles them well. I he don't turns think, up in the summer and wins I don't the big he, box. I don't it? think he stays form. I don't think he'll stay form no. home personally. Yeah. But I mean, you can see him. You can see him show him up for a I mean, he, he did get to that last in the cross country. Just go no. 
He went, no, thank you. Uh, price? Uh, 100. There you go, got it right. All right, now, we've talked about your egg on face horses. Mine will 100% be number 38, Fortescue. I had to jump off this project. He was running on in the beach. Oh, they're putting on blinkers. It's the hope that kills you. I'm going to have to have two pound. And at what price, Pat Cooney? A66, and, and I'm a bit with you. I, I've, I see good in everybody, and I've seen good in this fella several times. It's all nice, Pat. And I, 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 I keep writing the checks. I'll never, never be back for another season. <laughs> um, I, does he prefer softer, maybe? I don't know. Um, he was knackered when he came down last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, he, but if you watch All him right, in the Giles. picture... Yeah. Well, he was, wasn't he? just poo-poo his tip, like. I don't know, I'm not poo-pooing his tip. Listen, you know, the best system uh, for backing winners of the Grand National anyway is to back all the horses that would really annoy you if they won. He's having a different season <laughs> this season so, as well, isn't he? He's, gone in, he's coming in cold, if you like. He was 1-1-1 machine, not quite that, but he was running in some very... Mm. He beat Fiddle on the Roof, didn't he, at Ascot, mm. do you remember? Yeah, and he yeah. just, oh, I thought last year... No, he's, got, you know, he's, got, he's got talent, but I just... Yeah. It's a family connection with Hugh Nugent, and you know, Hugh takes the ride, and he knows the horse, obviously, but your, Hugh's, challenge your will, or something? Hugh's challenge will be... A huge challenge. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't He's hear so that. hungry. Thankfully, He's getting giddy, so he is here. Huge, huge challenge will be getting him interested over the first couple. So if he does, he could run well. You're giving him a huge chance then. I'm yeah? giving him a huge <laughs> egg on face chance. Uh, a lot of us will be doing right this after this show. Number 39, back on the lash, uh, mainly associated with the cross country. Great success. Ground one against him at Cheltenham Pat. You'll have it here. Yeah, 33. Um, one of those sneaky outsiders. The ground has sued him a lot better. Just pretend it didn't happen, that P at Cheltenham last time out. Base him on his previous runs. He fits that. Give you a good spin for your each way money. He's got the jockey's jockey on him as well, Adam Wedge, who just, uh, all, all the jocks, the British jocks, absolutely revere this chap. So he could he could nurse him round, couldn't he? Well, I might do, but I won't be happy till I am back on the last show. Move on. And number 40, if you've drawn the final ticket, Pat Cooney, I'm coming to you. The other lads are beside themselves. It's born by the sea. Uh, Philip Penwright, is it a lucky spin? Mm, 100 to 1. Um, and as things stand at the moment, out of all the 40 in the race, this is our best result. So if he were to win, We'll be building a statue of him outside the front door in the office. Um, can't see it. There you go. Uh, that's likely, uh, I, I'd imagine, not to happen. <laughs> Born by the sea, but won't be making a big splash. Ah, I got the line in. We got the 40 runners in, finally. Let's move on. Hope you've enjoyed it. To the one, two, three, fours. Right, drum roll, please. It is the one, two, three, four for the panellists, 2023 Grand National. Before that, though, we're running a great opportunity here at the Racing Post. Check out this free bets offer. Forward slash free bets then. That's simple. You'll be surprised how many you can get as well. All right then. One, two, three, fours. Let's go with uh, with the four, <coughs> shall we, to Pat Cooney. 2023 Grand National winner will be... Our Power. Runner-up, Le Milos. Then Vanillier. And ain't that a shame. Ooh, Pat's got in with a strong, strong... And this is the sort of race, DJ, isn't it, where we just have a squad for us, isn't it? What will be DJ's winner of the race? Well, Henry de Robb had trained the 1-2 in the race when Manila Times beat Balco to Flow, and I'm going to take a chance that he might do it again, OK? Uh, my 1-2-3-4. Now, while we were previewing each of those horses, I think I had about 27 horses finishing the first four, <laughs> but I've married, managed to narrow it down. My number one is Ain't That a Shame. My number two is Gabby's Cross, who I think is overpriced. I think he'll run well. Three Longhouse Poet, four Galvin. Paul Keeley. Say it with a smile, man. One of, the, one of us is not going to have a very good Grand National, are we? <laughs> uh, I think it's very straightforward. One by one is Capadano. <laughs> yeah. And number two is Lamilus. Number three is Lifetime Ambition. And number four is The Big Breakaway. Mmm, that's interesting. You're right. We are picking some of the same horses. We've got 40 and we're going for them. I think... I can't believe they've not got him in the top four. I think Corrick Rambler will steam through and win this. I think Velvet Elvis will run well in second for Tom Gibney. I think he's going to be there. I like the big breakaway. And in fourth, yes, over the Milos is Dil Kerr. There is your one, two, three, fours for the panel. Well, draw breath. We did it. Another year. Another pin stickers guide. Pat, great fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and... Um... I'm not sure if I'm even more confident or less confident after listening to all the other opinions. It's a bit of a head scratcher, <laughs> but lads, we did really well to get through it, and uh, we're looking forward to the race, aren't we? Just more than ever, really. I mean, there's been so many. There's been. Uh, 
a lot of eggs thrown, let's get that out of the way, but it is still the greatest sporting spectacle. Well, you always remember where you were when you watched the Grand National. Like, I remember when Tiger Roll won his first one and, and everything. And, and I'm going to remember this year's Grand National anyway, because I'm going to be sitting beside Paul Keeley for <laughs> Racing Post Live. <laughs> you, you we're are spending four hours bacon. in the studio together. <laughs> yeah, you can tune in then. Join us live tomorrow, 2 p.m. Yes, it's a late start. We're back. Is Racing Post Live and DJs. We're going to have some fun. Natalie Green joins us as well, along with this man who would have had breakfast by that point, I can assure you. And I, better have a, I better add. <laughs> you, you, you better add, that's sure. You can watch us on YouTube, of course. Get involved on Twitter. Uh, hashtag RP Live. Really good fun that is going to be. Uh, okay, uh, so from us all then, thank you very much for watching. Safe gambling this weekend. That's what it's all about. Uh, listen, top four in the national. Just go for that. We wish you all the best with your hopes. I'll see you tomorrow then, Kills. You will. Uh, in better form. DJ, cannot wait for this. It's going to be great. I'll be grateful. Fun. What's the matter with you? You're an absolute miser, mate. It's not Christmas. It's not Scrooge time, is it? <laughs> and Pat Cooney, what a pleasure it's been. Yeah, and I'm up there tomorrow. And yeah. um, I just love everything about Aintree Racecourse. Fantastic. We wish you luck. All right, we wish you luck out there as well. It's the Grand National. Enjoy. <laughs>